by the word and of God. Hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And hearing by the word of Ooh. God. Hi. We welcome you to Straight from the Pulpit. I'm Pastor Don Hope. I'm Pastor Stanley Blackshire. And we are your host for the next few moments. We are excited to present to you a relative discussion that comes from a biblical perspective. And for the next few moments, we want you to be encouraged. Uh, you will receive some truthful conversation. You'll receive some transparent conversations. You'll even receive some comical conversations. But at the end of the day, we pray that you'll receive some empowerment conversations. Listen, we're going to begin a series of talks, and the first one that we will begin deals with the topic worth. Deals with the topic worth. And for a subtopic on today, I want to challenge this particular thought to you. A life worth living. A life worth living. I'm reminded about 10 years ago when my father gave me a weed eater. He passed down a weed eater to me and I went to a place to get it repaired. And upon getting it repaired, the head technician back in the back uh, discovered what kind of a weed eater it was. To my knowledge, um, it was a very antique Shandawa, heavy duty uh, weed eater. The guy came from the back and he offered me uh, a good amount of money for this. And me being a businessman, I knew right up front that what he was offering me was just a fragment of what it was actually worth. So I had a decision. Do I sell out for the now, give up on the later? And I discovered at that particular time because my father gave me this, it was worth something to me from the start. And so I refused to let go of what my daddy gave me because of the initial worth that it was. And that's why I want to kind of talk to uh, the viewers uh, from on today and allow Pastor Blackshaw to kind of get into this more. I want to ask you the question, do, do we really know who we are? Do we really know what we are worth? Do we really know our value? Um, from a spiritual and holistic point of view. Pastor Pope, that's, you know, that's an interesting take on how, um, how we view life and how we navigate our, our way through life. Um, because a lot of times we depend on what others say or think of us to help us determine what our worth and our true value is. Um, I have two daughters that I love uh, dearly. And when they were growing up, I always spoke positively to them. I always called them my little princes. And, and I told them how beautiful they were. And they would go to school and someone would say something negative to them about what they look like or how they appear. And all of the work of me enforcing and reinforcing what I thought of them and the value that I tried to put in them. In those few moments that, that they would hear someone say something negative to them, it would undo all of the talking and the value that I tried to place in them. So when we go through life, a lot of times we rely on others. We rely on situations and circumstances to help us determine what our worth or our true value is. But I believe, and, and, and in these discussions, in this straight talk from the pulpit, uh, we, we intend to take practical uh, applications and make them work as well as biblical perspectives as to how we're to... Um, uh, conduct our lives and navigate our way through life. So understand that sometimes when we look at things, not everybody is going to see things from the biblical perspective. So we want to welcome all of you. Make sure that you understand that all of you are welcome to be a part of what we're doing on this straight talk from the pulpit, because we know and understand that sometimes life happens Absolutely. and not everybody looks at life uh, from the same view, from the same perspective that those who may be uh, conducting or, 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 con or condoning their lives through a biblical sp perspective. So today when we talk about worth and we talk about value, that's an interesting perspective to look at things and how we come. 
Absolutely. We, we have to also understand you're, you're looking at us with the suits, with the slacks, with the shirts. We're preachers, we're pastors, but guess what? We are human. We, we feel, we bleed, we go through things. And what we're telling you, we're simply messengers um, sharing with you our convictions by the word of God. Listen, I want to share with you this first thing. I did a research in 2022. Uh, I realized that of the entire world, um, six out of 10 people are happy. Wow. I found that out when they rated from one to 10. They said six people are actually happy. And watch this. The other four are out of the six people that are happy is only because of happenings. Wow. You have to understand the difference between happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. um, happiness is extrinsic where enjoy is intrinsic. Yeah. Happiness is by happenings. And so sometimes we allow things and people and positions to substitute the root of where our true joy comes from, where our true worth comes from. And, and I've discovered that, you know, you, you, you may can get a, you may can get a watch, but you can't get time. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you may can get a house, but you can't get a home. You may can get medicine, but you can't get help. There are some things you can't uh, necessarily substitute. And when it comes to our worth, Pastor Blackshaw, let me tell you something. Uh, and I don't know how you feel about this. Uh, worth does not come from the world. Right. It comes from the word. Right. Now, it's interesting because um, uh, I I've got to say this. I think, I think this is worth mentioning. Uh, at the time of this particular broadcast, this time that we're sharing with you, uh, the Powerball is at about $1.6 billion. <laughs> now look, you know, I don't try to, I don't try to um, encourage any debauchery of any kind, uh, but I understand realistically that there are going to be some people who are going to try uh, to win that Powerball because most of them have said already, Lord, if I could have that much money, how happy <laughs> on, would I be? The things I could do. And some people are saying, yo, you're going to change. The money's going to change. Yes, it's going to change. It's going to change my address. It's going to change the car drive. It's going to change the clothes I wear. Because a lot of us have already determined in our minds that there are certain things, material and otherwise, um, that will make us happy and that will give us value and give us worth. But the truth of the matter is, from the biblical perspective, the truth of the matter is you can have this whole world Come on, man. and not be happy. That's right. You can have all of the wealth, all of the riches and not be happy. There's a songwriter that says you can have this whole world, but give, give me, me Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> and then Jesus follows it up by saying, what does it profit a man oh, God. to gain the whole world oh, God. and lose the most valuable possession that he may have, and that is his soul. So truly, when we look at worth, when we look at value, and we look at a life that is worth living, whatever we are, whoever we are, from the biblical perspective, we believe that that value and that worth consists and is dependent upon our relationship with Jesus Christ. Man, that is awesome. I, I want to take this first question to allow both of us to kind of dissect this. And the first question that I want to bring to the to the forefront is um, you can ask answer this question yourself. What is the importance of knowing your worth? Wow. What's the what's what's the importance? What's the real value behind knowing? Watch this. Who you are, whose you are, and what you've been placed on this earth to do. Let me tell you something. If Jesus in Matthew, he took a group of people in the middle of their profession mm. and he says, I don't want to eliminate your profession, but I want to carve it to a higher purpose. Wow. Instead of you being fisher, fishermen, I want to carve and mold you to be fishers of men. I want to share with you something. Um, you are not on earth merely to exist. Yeah. You are on this earth to live. That's two different things. 
And if you don't know who you are, if you don't know your value, if you don't know who you're connected to, yourself, sorry to say, you're existing, but you're not maximizing your potential to live. Right. And I want to begin by saying that the first purpose, the first purpose of knowing your worth is actually walking into an avenue of living because the reality is, watch this, if you don't know your worth, hmm. if you don't know the creator who has created you to know your worth, then chances are you're not going to be able to maximize any worth to anybody else. And if you cannot accept for yourself, you cannot realize for yourself your true value, who you are and what your purpose is, you will accept what anyone else says about you. Wow. You will be happy with Man. everyone else telling you who you are, who you should be, what you should do, and how you should live. But it is so vitally important that we look at life through the lens of understanding our own self-value and self-worth. As a preacher, as a pastor, and as a person who leans towards uh, the Christian faith, I rely heavily on what the word of God says about who I am. And I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. That works for me. That's a system of belief uh, that works for me. Jesus tells us that when it comes to love, he tells us that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Yes, sir. So the beginning point is that you have to know your value. You have to understand who you are. You have to be willing to love who you are before you can love anyone else. Because if you don't love you, you can't love nobody else. Well, while we're on that topic, Dale, let's go ahead and walk into the next room here. Now, now that we've understand that there's a purpose that we uh, should have, that we should know ourselves, let's kind of walk into the room and let's, and let's expose the stumbling blocks hmm. for knowing our worth. Yeah. There, there are some stumbling blocks and there are some things that will come into our atmosphere that will distract and detour us from truly knowing who we are. You want to talk about that for a second? Absolutely. Um, because this is, again, we've, we've, we've kind of touched on this. We've highlighted this, that some of the stumbling blocks are the same things um, that we overlook so easily in that we become comfortable with people saying to us who they think we are, who they think we should be, and how they think we should live. So some of the stumbling blocks is, number one, is accepting what someone else says about who you are, rather than what God says about who we are. And the only way we can un understand fully what it is that God says about us, we have to begin an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And the way we start those intimate relationships, those bonding moments with the Lord is not only through prayer, but by understanding the word of God, coming to the place that we hear what the Lord is saying to us through his word, understanding what the word says to us, and then accepting and embracing what the word says about us. Absolutely. And then once we accept and embrace what the word says about us, then we begin to put building blocks in place to mature us so that we could grow in the nurturing and the admonition and the wisdom and understanding of who we are in Christ and who God says we are. So I think one of the first stumbling blocks is, is relying too heavily on what someone else says. I like that. In, in essence, and let me be short with that, I think sometimes what's an issue is not necessarily our position. Sometimes what's an issue is us being around what I want to call parasitic people. Wow. P people, people who thrive on grabbing and gravitating uh, to you, you got to be careful of listening to the wrong voice. Yeah. And I love the passage of scripture in Psalm where it reminds us that I am fearfully and wonderful. And I am wonderfully made. Yeah. I am handcrafted without a mistake. Right. <laughs> the, the Lord did not make a mistake when he made me. I'm the best me that I could ever be. And I think if we get to the point, uh, uh, Brother Stanley, where we where we can just love on ourselves yeah. before we love on before we love to anybody else, I think we will be on the road to knowing our worth. Absolutely. Listen, we gotta pay a few bills, we gotta do some due justice, 
Afterward, we're going to be back to talk a little more on how we can know our worth. Straight from the pulpit, I'm Pastor Stanley Blackshaw. I'm Pastor Don Pope. Be back with you in just a moment. Now you can, at the world's only tattoo school, where Dr. Bill Pogue, the owner and director of the world's only tattoo school, offers the seven fastest growing profession in the country. Tattoo artists can bill their services at $150 an hour in cash. The world only tattoo school offers a two week intensive course, which includes all of your equipment and licensing assistance that can put you in business. Cost is only $5,600 Classes are every day for two weeks, and you are a certified tattoo artist. We also offer courses in body piercing and permanent makeup. Call now, 318-303-6881 to enroll for next available class. Instructors are on duty now. World's only tattoo school, 403 Lake Street, Shreveport. Website is tattoo-school.com. World's only tattoo school. Instructors are standing by, 318 303-6881, world's only tattoo school. Greetings. My name is Stanley Blackshire. I'm the pastor of the Friendship Baptist Church right here in Grand Cane, Louisiana. There is no doubt in God's love for his people. It's simple. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then there's another verse of scripture that tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is why we know that the love of God is real. Listen, we would love for you to come and share with us. We would love to have you in our worship experience. When you come to this place, you will experience love and great appreciation. Our address is 1556 Blount Mill Road, Grand Cane, Louisiana. We would love to see you here. Come join us. God bless you and God keep you. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Toya. If you like listening to the latest hip hop and urban music, then you should tune in to K Ham Radio at khamradio.com where we go ham. I think we went too high. Kia, movement that inspires. We respect our past, but we are always moving forward. race car that you can drive on the road. The highest horsepower naturally aspirated V8 in automotive history. Our whole goal is to capture that thrill of the drive. The world of luxury has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. We just want to get our car. Take the blue key, you go back to the luxury you know. You take the red key, and you'll never look at luxury the same again. This is unreal. It's very real. This is what luxury looks like. And this is what it sounds like. Nes 
Straight from the pulpit, I'm Pastor Stanley Blackshire. I'm Pastor Don Pope. Glad to have you back with us. Pastor Pope, we were talking a moment ago about life worth living and some of the issues that comes up uh, as a result of discovering and understanding our value and our worth. Enlighten us a little bit more, if you will. Absolutely. The first part that we got a chance to talk about was the, re was the absolute necessity of knowing who we are, whose we are, what we've been called to do. Do you know there are people that are walking around not living but just existing? Mm. Do you know there are individuals that are really not happy with themselves? And it's because of the disconnection between the creator and the created. Now there are other stumbling blocks uh, that will occur, but that's the foundational one. Uh, you have others that deal with our position. It deals with parasitic people who we hang around. Mm. But now I want to walk into another avenue that I think will be very important for us to talk about. And that is the requirements. The requirements for living a life worth living. Yeah. And I want to start with this first word, Pastor Blackshire. Standards. You have to have standards <laughs> in order to be able to walk in worth. I share with my daughters, um, and, and this is a, a statement that may go over a couple of people's head, but let, 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 let me just be transparent with you. I share with my daughter when they first started dating. I said, remember this, you attract what you present. Mm. Let me say that again. Wow. You attract what you present. Meaning, if you attract looseness, looseness comes to you. But on the flip side, if you know who you are, if you understand the value of what God has planted in you, you don't have to settle, and that's the truth, that's the, that's the word right there. Right. You don't have to settle for anything or anybody. Right. And when you understand that, that, that you, once again, are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are handcrafted by God without a mistake for a specific purpose. You just won't let anything and anybody come to your address right there. Right. Now, <clears throat> I believe it was Layla Ali who shared the story about her father, uh, the late, great Muhammad Ali. Um, and it was referencing the way a woman presents herself. And he said to her, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm not giving the entire story uh, uh, in detail, but I'm paraphrasing. He said, if anybody wants anything precious, they have to dig for it. They have to dig to a degree that what they want is not exposed on the surface, but you have to dig for it. Come on. So when you present yourself in such a way that your value, the intrinsic value of who you are, is not just so exposed so that people can take it loosely or not seriously, but they understand that if they want to be a part of your life, if they want to have some relationship with you, they have to dig down through the core of who you are. And what you present, is it has to be more than what we show on the surface. 
Oh, that's awesome. Do you yeah. know that pearls are hidden at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah. Not at the top, at the bottom. You got to go down below to grab and get it. And then you got to open, open it up, up in order to get the right. prize. And that's some right. of us have just opened up and showed the gifts to everybody. <laughs> Well, that's a whole different conversation. Victoria's Secret is not a secret. No I, I'm telling you. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Listen, listen. That, that's our first thing is that you have, we have to have standards. And, and like I said, we're not being judgmental. We're just really opening up the truth. Uh, we, you have to have standards. But then watch this. Number two, and this don't go just for females. This go for all of us. We have to make some changes. Yeah. We have to make some changes if we expect growth to come in our lives. Listen. I said an analogy once that said, if, if our plan is to drive to a certain location and we're putting a Samsonite luggage in the back of the trunk, we open up the trunk and realize there's trash in it. Mm. I don't care if we switch the trash to the left, it's not going to fit. Right. If we switch the trash to the right, it's not going to fit. If we push the trash all the way to the back, it's not going to fit. It's only until we place the trash out that we can put the truth in. That right. Somebody needs to hear what I'm just right. saying on that part. Yeah. Because it's all, God is not going to put fresh wine in a dirty wine skin. He wants to give us freshness. And I'm talking to somebody here. Even on this part, I'm telling you from a transparent point of view, I lived life dirty. I lived life nasty. And God said, before I can do something with you, you got to bring everything to me so I can put something fresh in your life. Dr. R. Timothy Jones said this not too long ago. He said, sometimes God has to hurt you to save you. Wow. So sometimes the changes that we need to make in life may be hurtful. It may be painful because people that we're accustomed to having around, things that we're accustomed to holding on to, that ripping away from us, that pulling away, that taking that thing away from us can sometimes cause us discomfort or maybe even hurt. But in order for God to take us to the place that he really wants us to be, sometimes he has to rip some things away from us My in goodness. order to get the best from us. I like that God is the master mathematician. He knows how to take us to square root before he decides to multiply. Right. I love that part right there. Change is necessary. Sometimes <laughs> we don't like it, but change is good. I like you on that one. I'm going to cash up you after that one. But <laughs> <I> listen, <laughs> we got a third one here. When we understand that we have to make changes, then watch this. There has to be a sense of commitment and consistency. Commitment and consistency. You want to deal with that for a second, man? Commitment. I was. Um, I love stories like this. Um, but there was a story of um, some of the men who had gone to California, people during the gold rush era, were making their way to California. And there's a story of this one particular guy who had found a spot that he wanted to dig. And so he dug and he dug. And it took him years. Two years had gone by, he hadn't found anything. Three years had gone by, he didn't find anything. So sooner uh, or later, he got to the place where he felt like it was futile. And he had just gave up. He took his pickaxe, took his shovel, took all of his drilling equipment, and left and moved to another spot. Well, another guy comes in, and he has the commitment to dig and to drill. And so he begins to hammer away. He digs not even two feet and hits a mother load. Finds the greatest uh, deposit of gold that you could ask for. The other man, had he just been committed to the task, could have gotten the reward of digging to get the prize that he looked for. Sometimes we say that we're going to do something. Sometimes we take on a task, but we don't really commit to it. To give it a temporary name. Let me ask you this. How many of us missed our greatest blessings behind our biggest giants? Wow. <laughs> Psalm 27 and 13 and 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, he shall strengthen thine heart. Yeah. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Watch this. Wait does not suggest that we just sit here and do nothing. Right. But wait says, continue to be 
in faithfulness continue to be in steadfastness in expectation of what God is about to do. Absolutely. And I say this in my closing. Oftentimes, we just need to allow God to fertilize the right seeds that he's allowed us to plant into fertile ground. You want something from God? You, you want to establish your worth? You want to become mature? I dare you to stay consistent in your work and watch God work. Listen, once again, we're going to pay some bills. We will see you in a few moments. Boy, we're enjoying ourselves. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. Pastor Don Pope. I'm Stan Blackshire. And this is Straight from the Poor. God bless you. Be right back. Greetings. My name is Stanley Blackshire. I'm the pastor of the Friendship Baptist Church right here in Grand Cane, Louisiana. There is no doubt in God's love for his people. It's simple. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And then there's another verse of scripture that tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is why we know that the love of God is real. Listen, we would love for you to come and share with us. We would love to have you in our worship experience. When you come to this place, you will experience love and great appreciation. Our address is 1556 Blount Mill Road, Grand Cane, Louisiana. We would love to see you here. Come join us. God bless you and God keep you. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Toya. If you like listening to the latest hip hop and urban music, then you should tune in to K Ham Radio at khamradio.com where we go ham. I think we went too high. Kia, movement that inspires. We respect our past, but we are always moving forward. race car that you can drive on the road. The highest horsepower naturally aspirated V8 in automotive history. Our whole goal is to capture that thrill of the drive. Luxury has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. We just want to get our car. Take the blue key, you go back to the luxury you know. You take the red key, and you'll never look at luxury the same again. This is unreal. It's very real. This is what luxury looks like. And this is what it sounds like. Nessun dorma, ma il mio mistero è chiuso in me.
back once again, straight from the pulpit. I'm Pastor Don Cole. I'm Pastor Stan Blackshire. We have really enjoyed this segment speaking with you on this subject of yes. worth and understand that we have a life that's worth living. I don't care how bad life presents itself. We, when we know our worth, when we know who we are, when we know whose we are, when we know what we're connected to do, it's worth going that extra mile. And for the next few moments, I want to talk, uh, Pastor Blackshire, if we can just talk from a transparent point of view, because although we've been in church most of our lives, all if not lives. all of our lives, yeah. we've had some uh, barometric pressures. Yeah. Uh, we, we've <clears throat> had some moments to where our uh, faith has been severely tested. That's right. And, and what, what, what can you give to the people from a transparent, parent point of view to encourage the viewers um, of holding on to hope when life seems hopeless. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can uh, because that's a broad statement um, <laughs> and it covers a great deal of uh, thought. Um, but I want to just share this with you. Uh, <clears throat> there's a story of a group of people who took a tour to go to this particular a cathedral, chapel, or what have you. And there was a painting on the wall that was entitled Checkmate. Wow. People who know me know that I'm an avid chess player. I love the game of chess. <laughs> the painting on the wall simply said Checkmate. And it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a depiction of Satan and the man playing chess. And the way it would look is that Satan was going to win the game that he had this person to where he could no longer make any moves. Well, while they were taking the tour, there was a chess master who was in the group with the tour guide. So the chess master, the master chess player, stops and looks at the painting. And he says, you're either going to have to change the name of this portrait, or you're going to have to reveal that the man has another move. I see you. The chess master, wow. the grandmaster chess player was able to see that even though it looked bleak, it looked as if the man had no hope, there was one more move. And so he said to those that were in the audience, the game is not over because the king has one more move. Wow. No matter how bleak your circumstances look, whether you look at it from the biblical perspective or from the practical perspective. And again, as a pastor, as a preacher, as a person who's been reared in church, who knows nothing but God, uh, who, has, who has been brought up to know and understand God, I've made some mistakes along the way, but what I've come to understand is that God works best for me. That's what works best for me. For others, it may be something else. But wherever you are in life, there's always one more move. Let me tag on to that, because maybe you're not an avid chess player, but maybe you have invested in the game of checkers. <laughs> and if you've invested into the game of checkers, you understand that checkers is not just about hopping over one uh, particular uh, chess, uh, check, uh, checkers place. But, but, but the game of checkers is actually to get to the other side. Yeah. And when you get to the other side, as part of the rule, Something has to be done to you. Yeah. Come on with me right yeah, quick. Yeah. When you get to the other side, something has to be other has to be done to you. What has to be done to you? They gotta put another piece on top of you for successfully going to the other side. And when you get this other piece, you have more of an advantage than you did when you first started. Right. Can I share with you our life experiences? is only molding us to get ready for the other side because on the other side there's peace on the other side there's fellowship with the father eternally on the other side there's no more sickness on the other side there's no more bills on the other side there's yep. no more tragedy come on here Watch so, out, man. so you know i said like this let the mayor uh uh have his spot you know, let the governor have his spot. Let, 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 the, let the president have his spot in the White House. 
But my objective is to get to the Father's house. Yeah. And I want to encourage you with that for right there. Don't be discouraged. Uh, don't be discouraged by life circumstances. Understand that it's just a piece in preparation and going to the other side. But listen, in our conclusion to this um, discussion, we're so happy that you have decided to join us. And what we want to do, we want to invite you to have communication with us. Uh, the information is on the screen if you, if you would like to communicate with us, either by email or if the Lord lays upon your heart to sow a seed into this show. We invite sponsors, we, in, we invite individuals to sow with us as we just listen to the Lord uh, in expectation of how he's going to bless the viewers. So, until next time, I'm Pastor Don Pope. I'm Pastor Stan Blackshire. And you have been watching Straight, Straight from, from the, the pulpit. pulpit. God bless you. God bless you. Next time. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And hearing by the word of God. Ooh.